we got ourselves pretty heavily in debt. I use the debit card all the time. Nicola manages all of our finances. I took a stab at it early on in our relationship and... Things went wrong with our insurance, so I said forget it. She doesn't have a clear understanding of all of our expenses. He knows that I have a pretty good handle on it. When it comes to sports, we'll dip into credit cards. We put him on an allowance for $100 a week. Why am I working so hard and I'm on such a tight budget? Where does all of our money go? I'm a sales representative for a software company. Nicola and I met when we were in high school, the whole high school sweetheart thing. I've been married to Mark for 11 years. We have three kids. Rebecca's 12, Jason's 10, Josh is eight. They're all into soccer and hockey. It's an active lifestyle. First of all, I'm a mother, but I do work as an educational assistant with special needs kids. Our family income is about 125,000 a year. Instead of coming home and making ourselves some dinner, we'll go and we'll pick up dinner somewhere. Because he makes about five times more than I do, it makes him feel bigger and more important. I make a reasonable amount of money, and I think that I should be able to enjoy it. I think his allowance really bugs him. A lot of times I feel as though I have to go and ask permission, almost as a child would their parent, to do something when it comes to our money. If I were to have to put a percentage around who's to blame as far as why we aren't saving money, it's a high percentage for Nicola, maybe 70, 80 percent. If something were to ever happen and I was unable to work, our whole life would come apart. This month, I'll help this couple move from red to black. I've been solving money problems for over 20 years, tackling everything from high finance to low income. I help people understand money and debt, which is still a huge mystery for most folks. And it's the number one reason couples split up. So now, I'm making house calls. Mark and Nicola are impulsive buyers with no idea how close they're living to the edge. There are control issues here and deep resentments are brewing. I'm here to help them go from red to black. And your boss, great. I'd love it if I could have an opportunity just to have a look around, would you mind? Lots of food in the fridge, so they can eat at home. Can you say something? The boys' room looks lovely. Let's go see the basement. <laughs> Hockey is this family's passion. I have seen your tapes, and I have been through your finances with a fine-tooth comb. Mark? You are very resentful. Financially, you don't feel like you have any control. You just bring home the dough, and then you're discounted completely. That's probably a fair assessment. Him being on an allowance is not OK if no one else is on an yep. allowance. That's not fair. You are at once controlling and underappreciated. There's a sense that because you don't make as much as your husband does, that your value is less than his value. Now. If the kids were in childcare, it would cost his family about $1,500 a month. Even though Nicola only earns about $24,000 a year, because she's there with them all the time, she's saving this family about $42,000 a year in childcare costs. I see three things that have to be fixed here. You need to get a sense of where the money's going. The second thing is, is that you need to communicate better. And the third thing is, is you have no savings. He gets into a car accident tomorrow, your whole family's up a creek without a paddle. Mark and Nicola are too busy spending in the present to save for the future. For big ticket items like sports fees, they end up using their credit and then spend months paying it back. And every time there's a game, there's also a trip to a fast food joint. Eat out a little? <laughs> I guess. Yes, you did a lot. You went out for dinner on February 2nd. 
February 3rd, February 4th, February 7th, 9th, 11th, twice you ate on the 14th, yeah. three times out on the 21st. This aspect of your budget is way out of control. It's even more than I thought. Day-to-day -day spending can really add up, but this family also has some big annual expenses. You think you're spending about $5,000 a year on sports. Mm -hmm. In actuality, your sports costs are running at about $12,000 a year. I thought five was a little conservative, but 12, I never thought that for a minute. My stomach almost dropped. <laughs> it was a bit of a shock. If you guys don't get this in control, at some point, you're gonna be in a crisis overall. So I will be giving you a set of tasks to do. And if you complete the tasks that I assign you, I will award you $5,000 at the end. But for each task you don't complete, mm -hmm. I'm gonna take money away. Now, tell me if there is something that you guys are specifically working towards right now. Our two youngest sons share a bedroom. I think it's nine feet by nine feet. One's messy, one's neat. We have a basement yes. and we would like to put two bedrooms down there. What I need from you is a promise that you are gonna work hard and do what needs to be done to achieve the ends that we want to achieve. Do I have your promise? Absolutely. I promise. The next thing you need to do is you need to bring me your credit cards and your debit cards because you're gonna to learn to live on cash. We've managed by floating some of our expenses onto credit cards for so long. It's gonna be a big change for us. Coming up, can Mark and Nicola cut their spending and survive an entire month without credit? It's roughly, say, $60. Yes. Mark and Nicola make $125,000 a year. Since he brings in the lion's share, Mark resents that he's on an allowance, and Nicola feels undervalued because her income is lower. Their family passion is sports, which consumes a chunk of their income. This month, they'll be playing by my rules. For the next month, this couple will learn to live on a strict cash budget. No more credit cards. They'll complete weekly challenges to tackle their money and relationship issues. And if they're willing to change, I'll reward them with thousands of dollars. No changes, no money. Come on, guys. You have those credit cards for me? See this? All this sports paraphernalia is exactly what we don't want going on these cards. So you're gonna have to live on cash, and I'm gonna hide these cards, mm -hmm. and hopefully I'll remember where I put them so I can give them back to you in four weeks. Now they won't be able to use these cards for impulse purchases. I've always said I should cut up my debit card and try to live on cash sometimes. Yeah, so I think it's a good thing. These challenges are designed to tackle the issues, not just the symptoms. And the first issue we're dealing with is a lack of planning. Your task this week is to eliminate your restaurant eating by creating a set of 12 menus that you can use while you're schlopping the kids from here to yonder to substitute for all that fast food you've been eating. Sounds good. And now you, Mark. <laughs> Over the next week, what I want you to do is I want you to follow the budget and divvy up the money you will be spending into these jars. Mark feels Nicola has been controlling the money, so this month it's in his hands. There are the fixed expenses, be it the mortgage or the hydro, those things aren't even up for debate. But there's the variable expenses, the things like money for the kids or groceries. And what you will be doing is you will be figuring out weekly what goes into each jar and then taking the money out and giving it to whoever needs it. So what do you think about that? I'm nervous, but I'm willing to give it a shot. We'll both learn a lot from him having some control. It's just me having to release some of that control is a little nerve wracking. So you're gonna see here that my math is gonna be challenged a little bit, but let's have at it. Okay, so. For gas and oil and repairs, I have to put in 500 by four weeks. Having not managed the money for probably the last six or more years, it's a little overwhelming for me. Potatoes for the stew and baked potatoes. That's huge. Banana, orange. We have two days of apples, don't we? 
No. I'll make it. No. No, it's not in my budget. I've given them a total budget of $2,110 for the month outside of fixed expenses. Mark has to divvy it up and keep track of it. Groceries is $600 for the month. Because I'm cheap. No. Can you? No. Do you have any pizzas? No. 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 Good try, though. The receipt for the groceries is in the bag. Okay. Put it in the jars. Okay, don't go under the... <laughs> my gas receipt. Ding, ding, ding. So 40 came out of the gas money? 40.02. That's it. There's no more gas money. So tell me how your week went. My week went well. Um, I had to prepare for a tournament, and I planned out menu, breakfast, lunch, dinner for a few days. But on the Saturday, we went with the team to a fast food restaurant. I had the packed lunches, but I felt bad for Josh, who is seven. <laughs> so I used $5 from my allowance to buy him lunch. It's your allowance. Spend it any way you wish. Having seen where the money goes, are you still put off by the fact that you're on a $100 a month allowance? No. Now that I see the miscellaneous things, which is where money can easily get lost, yes. I have a better understanding. I feel more comfortable with it. He gets it. Mark's six-figure income goes out the door as fast as it came in. Now it's time to build this family a safety net. We have allocated what you're spending. We haven't yet allocated what you're saving. And this is a big deal. If something were to happen to Mark tomorrow, you guys would end up living on just your income. That would barely cover your sports budget. <laughs> That's true. So what I want to do is I want to sit down with you and the kids and go through the process of going through your budget and figuring out what we're going to chop off okay. so that we can get to that $1,000 a month to put away. Coming up, is this family willing to make the sacrifices they need to in order to ward off potential disaster? That's... That can be cut. It's just gone? Yep. Money, 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 money. Money, 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 money. I've put this fast food loving family on a strict cash budget. With Mark in control, Nicola has to put the brakes on eating out. Every family should have six months worth of expenses set aside for emergencies. This family is far from that. Not for long. They're living on cash and they're doing the challenges I've set for them. And if they're successful, I'll give them up to $5,000. So this, guys, is your budget. One of the problems we have with this budget is nobody in this house is saving any money. So we have to find a way of cutting spending out of our budget so we end up with savings. Now, to show you how that works, I have for you a cake. <laughs> and what we're trying to do is we're trying to trim a piece out of your budget to put for savings. Mark and Nicola have learned a lot. Now it's time for their children to contribute to making a change. In this family, everyone will have to pitch in to make it work. So what I'd like you to do now is I'd like you to each come and indicate some of the things that you're prepared to give up to save. Another one. Good job. Now you pass it on to Rebecca. Clothes, she picked clothes first. Miss Name Brand. Well, you save $20. Give your parents a chance. Ready for this one? Hockey. Yes. Oh. That means giving it up. Cut oh, back. yours. Cut back. Having anxiety attacks. What do you think that'll save you a month? Fifty dollars. Kids, are you prepared to give up any of your sports? You want to give up hockey? You love hockey. Yeah. You're very brave. When Josh said that he wanted to give up hockey, um, it was, it was, I was very proud of that, but I wouldn't make him do that. How much do you think you can cut the electricity bill by? 20 to 30. Telephone. I think we could save probably about $30 a month. 25 and 30? 55. And 50? 105. And 40? 
They have a plan, but can they stick to it? If they do, Mark and Nicola will be saving $1,000 a month. I thought there's no way, there's no chance on this earth we could do that, but we're pretty close. I think we're 100 bucks short. We have made some fabulous progress. You worked hard and I really appreciate it. This is about practice, I think. As we practice, we'll get much better at just economizing as we go along. And I think that it'll be something that will be a, a life-altering experience for us. I want to know how your week went. I think we did well. Becky ran around the house shutting off lights. She told me. <laughs> and how did you do? Not bad. Not bad? What did you save us money on this week? Not going to restaurants. No fast food? None. Ace, dude. How did you do? I cut out the hockey as I said I was going to. Oh, you to. did? There okay. was a group that I was going to be playing with throughout the winter right. and I've chosen not to. I also went and got a set up on the RSP program at my work. When we started, these two couldn't agree on how to save. We have difference of opinions. He thinks the RSPs is a good way to go and then I say, well, but look at the mortgage. We get into this battle because we don't agree. I see an opportunity here for Mark to eat his cake, but for Nicola to have it too. Can I recommend that what you do then is take the tax refund that you get from having made that RSP contribution okay. and use it to pay down your mortgage? Okay. They seem to have their finances on track, but now the romance could use some work. When I looked at your tapes initially, I saw some emotions that were pretty strong. A little bit of resentment going on. I think his allowance really bugs him. It does annoy me that I have to think twice about buying something. You said that most of this stemmed from the fact that Nicola had no clue where the money was going. In fact, he said that 80% of the financial trouble you were in was your fault. Telling tales. And I think a little bit's changed since then. What you're going to do this week is you're each going to do something wonderful for the other person. And the kicker is, you can't spend any money. <laughs> We're going to put the romance back into this relationship. Instead of spending money on a movie and dinner where you don't really talk during a movie, <laughs> that we'll actually have to communicate with each other. I'm hoping this last challenge helps Nicola and I get back on the path to being a solid couple. My surprise for Mark is making him breakfast because it's his favorite meal of the day. It was really hard to think of something that didn't cost money. I love everything to do with breakfast, so when I do get a chance to have a proper, like a full breakfast, it's awesome. You know, if I could start every day like this. I could always leave work. And that would just contradict all of the stuff we just learned. Nice try. verdict. Can these two continue to trim excesses and turn things around to my satisfaction? Mark and Nicola have been living paycheck to paycheck. Now they're on a strict cash budget without any credit. The whole family has made sacrifices, but is it enough to earn the $5,000? Back to check and see how you did this week. Tell me about your challenge. At first it was difficult, because you're so used to spending money. These high school sweethearts had lost touch. Bye. So their final challenge was to find the romance by doing something nice for each other without spending a penny. When was the last time you guys had a date? It's been a while. Ooh. I couldn't, I couldn't tell you. Okay. You guys worked hard this month. When I got here, there was one big gaping hole in the budget, and that was we had no savings. You have actively started saving. Yep. And here is the very good news. If you continue to save $1,000 a month in an RSP until you retire, you will have $2 million. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. I have the paperwork to prove. On top of which, because you put money in an RSP, you get a tax refund. Take that tax refund and apply it to your mortgage as a prepayment, and you will knock six years off your mortgage amortization and save an additional $60,000 in interest costs. Really? 
$60,000. Is it worth giving up your debit cards? Sure. I'd yeah. say so. This whole family stepped up to make some major lifestyle changes. They're about to see how stepping up has paid off. I have something to get you moving forward. Wow. $5,000. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. I also have a surprise for you that goes with this. I think you'll find a good way to use it. I'd like you all come on in to meet my friend Jeff Masson yes. from Decking Around. Jeff's here to help you plan how you're going to spend your $5,000. Because what was your short-term goal? We built two rooms in the basement. In the basement. Hey, <laughs> wow. We have an expert. We have some money. Let's make it happen. The whole experience has been uh, pretty awesome. It opened up the communication and, and in a way forced us to learn how to talk to each other about money. What do you guys see happening down here? Big rooms, smaller rooms? Big room. This month, Mark got in touch with the money. The whole family figured out how to save $1,000 a month for their safety net, and Mark and Nicola managed to mend some sore spots in their relationship. Give me a hug. Thank you. He's gonna do what you need <laughs> in terms of the planning. 